Um, <clears throat> Excuse me for that. So today I will be doing another belated presentation. Do wish I were more timely with these on the terrestrial planets, which are Mercury, Earth, <laughs> which isn't talked about much here, uh, Venus, and Mars. Now, why are they all, with the exception of Earth, named after Roman gods? Well, Roman mythology, and it's named after him because Mercury was considered to be very fast. He was the messenger, um, and Mercury is the fastest of the planets. Venus has a somewhat ironic name, and I'm not entirely sure why it is named that. It looks very bright and kind of, you know, it, it looks pretty from the surface, but the conditions inside the surface are just hellish. Um, Remember the segment uh, in the Names of the plants, the suit miracles is the term in the originals. Okay, that's enough on that. Let's get to the imperial empirical data. <laughs> wow, I, uh, sorry guys, I'm recording this late and I'm gonna mess up a bit. Ellipses. Oops. This is how around the sun. As I mentioned before, Mercury is the fastest moving planet. And you know what? Now that I started this, I noticed that these planets shown here are not the actual solar system. Just ignore that. Uh, imagine those are the normal real planets. So in this case, the gigantic one near the sun would be Mercury, when Mercury is actually the smallest planet after Pluto's demise. Um, anyway, Mercury moves around 106. Uh, again, this is because it's close to the sun. It has the shortest distance to travel. Inside lines are faster. Uh, um, Uranus does the same thing. Um, this is important because it means that the weather system, if you could call it that, on Mercury is very is also very um, because of the vertical rotation. Uh, you're going to have a part that's near the sun for a fairly long time and a part that's away from the sun for a fairly long time. Uh, meaning the temperature is going to vary a ton. The 
всадник. Again, ignore the illustration. Take this is from a video game or a movie or something. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention when I first watched it. The opposite direction. It says, or which isn't really worth talking about too much. Because it's more to So let's take a closer look at the planets. Uh, let's look at atmosphere. Mercury doesn't really have an atmosphere. It's a lot like the does have some things, but it's not enough to shoot it or, uh, <laughs> you know, protect it, shield it from incoming uh, projectiles, let's say that, you know, floating space debris and um, UV rays. I'm going to go off the script here a little. I read a book a while ago that uh, said what the Earth's uh, climate would be like if it suddenly stopped rotating and one side was very cold and the other side was very hot. And it involved a lot of storms. So I imagine the Earth's atmosphere at all. There would be a ring of constant storms around its equator or the uh, dividing line between night and day. Because uh, it is very unique. Twelve mile thick atmosphere of sulfuric gas and carbon dioxide. Which is the reason it is such a hellish planet. Um, I forgot to mention, uh, Mercury does have some oxygen in it as well, just not enough to account for anything. And Venus's oxygen and water don't mean very much because it is. Mostly acidic. <laughs> so because of this super thick atmosphere. Wow, my mouse is on the screen. Venus has a really, really effective greenhouse. It tracks in a lot of heat. It's actually... The uh, thick atmosphere also reflects the amount of light, which is why Venus is called the morning and evening star. Um, it's about 900 degrees, which is enough to instantly find you. Of cooking things for no reason. <laughs> Mars is um, of particular interest, mostly because it's the most Earth like planet in the solar system. Um, 
very cold and the red dust that covers most of the surface also floats around a little in the air. And the pressure is very low, the air pressure. Uh, there's not a ton of atmosphere, which is our main barrier in the Mars colonization efforts. And that means uh, harmful rays can ravage the Martian surface. Um, there's also very high winds and dust storms, which terraform the surface. And speaking of the surface, let's take an even closer look. Mercury's surface is similar to that of other small atmosphere lacking planets because it has no shield against meteors. Just like the moon, it's covered in craters. It contains many huge, long craters called stumps. Uh, I apologize for my dog howling in the background. Um, yeah, these scarps are unique to Mercury, and it is theorized that they formed because of because of the planet's condensation and size after its formation when the uh, crust was scrunched up. Uh, Mercury also has a very small amount of these craters. Venus's surface is a tricky one because of the it's invisible from uh, from Earth, and what we do know about it is mostly from radar imaging. Um, what we do know is that the surface is very flat on the moons, and we get big circular bulges of red dust called coronae. Uh, the coronae are also concerned a lot of how far away from the sun they are, so they are, you know. Those are very common. Uh, Mars is a strange system where there's no crust and ice. Ice can also be found there, and it is theorized that liquid water once covered the surface of Mars. For uh, we we find that there are rounded rocks and sand and big canyons that look like they were carved out by water. Um, the north of Mars is covered in craters and is pretty well ravaged by the effects of time. And so this is mostly a feature of the planet. Um, Mars has very interesting features on its surface. You probably heard of a surface mound. Pretty long. Eight miles across. We need to find. Mount Everest, which is crazy, especially considering the tectonic plates of Mars don't move much. Uh, they think that this is because the mantle of Mars is more thick and colder than the mantle of Earth, which again is very interesting considering the fact that there are such huge mountains there. I imagine they're mostly volcanic in nature. Um, I believe all of this mod is a volcano. Um, Mars is also a boat. I believe it's the longest inlet in the solar system. Though it's not that high, about and it is 3,000 miles long. Now, how do we know all this? Uh, Mercury has been extensively studied from orbit, but never landed on, by the U.S. probe Messenger, which was launched in 2004. Most of the data we have on Mercury is uh, relatively new. Uh, no surface missions there. Yeah. 